isn't absolute. Is that clear? Yeah, so you take the student work as just like a sample, but it, it doesn't mean that they're like uh, A++. plus plus. Am I making sense? Right. So for example, this is learning objectives. It, it, it's not learning or, or, or outcomes. Is that clear? All right. So the next thing is like whenever you have learning objectives or behavioral objectives, behavioral objectives or learning objectives, it's not learning objectives, it's behavioral objectives. Okay, behavioral objectives. So this is the, this is going to be the title, behavioral objectives. What was behavioral objectives? There is a seat here. What is behavioral objectives? So you're after your explanation or after this presentation, you're anticipating behavior change. Am I making sense? All right, so in other words, the group is giving 40 minutes of presentation. And then after that presentation, you're anticipating that Whoever is attending your presentation, there has to be behavior change. I mean, it's, that, it's not that like you're doing it for fun, but that like you have a goal. Am I making sense? So that's how you're going to be writing, behavioral objectives. What does that mean? You're anticipating that behavior is going to be changing after your presentation. Is that clear? So then you, what, what is the title? Behavioral objectives. So make a note, please. Okay. All right, because um, all of you are going to be giving me PowerPoint presentation uh, slides, all right, so behavioral objectives. You have to write behavioral objectives. All right, guys? Okay. So the next thing is when you're doing behavioral objectives, you have to tell me, like, how many minutes your presentation is. And after completion, completion of that presentation, you're anticipating this behavior change to happen. Am I making sense? All right, so what am I going to write? After attending 45 minutes of educational presentation, the attendee will be able to. Is that clear? All right, shall I write it? Yes. Okay, all right, okay, so. objective is the title after attending 45 minutes of educational presentation the attendee who is the attendee in this case who are the attendees Everybody you right or the student right the attendee will be able to am I making sense okay so in other words you're kind of telling the person who's attending. So our presentation is 45 minutes. And then once you attend our 45 minutes of presentation, after we are done, we're promising that there is gonna be some behavioral change. And what are the changes? These are the changes. Am I making sense? Mm -hmm. Okay, guys. Okay, so it is after attending 45 minutes of educational <laughs> presentation, the attendee will be able to. Is that clear? So in other words, when you enter this classroom and then you look to this and then what are you gonna say? Oh, I really need to sit here for 45 minutes. That's the condition, right? Am I making sense? Mm -hmm. So in other words, like you have to know beforehand like why you should attend this. Right? So there is 45 minutes of presentation, and then after that, I'm guaranteed or I'm promised that I will be able to list factors that affect in skin integrity, distinguish primary intention healing, secondary intention healing, and tertiary intention healing, 
Assess and categorize a pressure injury based on the pressure injury and staging system. Differentiate the kinds of chronic wounds and how to assess a wound. Define irrigation and describe the steps of for irrigating a wound. Discuss the different types of wounds and tissues. Is this clear? Is there an empty seat? Okay. Learning objectives, is it the same thing as behavioral objectives? Yes. Okay. Yeah. It's the correct one is behavioral, behavioral. objectives. Okay. You know why? Because like learning, how do you assess learning? I mean, you know, like how do I kind of I cannot open your brain and see like how what did you learn? Does that make sense? So learn is not uh, uh, quantified. You cannot. So the three word, the three verbs you cannot use are there are three verbs you cannot use is learn understand no all right so these three verbs you cannot use it you know why because i cannot assess you cannot assess i mean the student will be able to learn what does that mean you know like how do you know she learned right okay or understand you you don't know the understanding part of it it's abstract does that make sense and no the person is gonna able to know it's you can't assess it you can't quantify it so these are the three verbs that you cannot use it okay where is the signing sheet okay so elena who's elena or did you you didn't sign okay and then uh, uh, Paula, okay, and Cristina Garcia, you haven't signed, okay, Florence, okay, and then uh, Isai, oh, he's not here, and then Natalie, oh, I remember you from last school, okay. Okay. All right. All right. So during the break, you can. Okay. All right. And uh, yeah. So uh, so behavioral objectives you can see. So we're going to be adding after attending 45 minutes of educational presentation, the attendee will be able to. So this are you're going to be starting your behavioral objectives with verbs, verbs. Active verbs. I see like if it's not posted, I'll put the, the verbs because you're going to be having like a list of verbs to distinguish like which one to use according to the task that you are anticipating the person to accomplish. Am I making sense? Mm -hmm. All right. So in other words, like if I'm going to be when I'm diabetes educator and I'm going to be checking, showing them like how to use the meter. So what verb I'm going to be using demonstrate the operation techniques of AccuCheck Aviva. Does that make sense? So I'm demonstrating, all right? So I'm gonna demonstrate, and then what am I gonna an, uh, uh, anticipate? So the person has to be able to return, demonstrate the, edu the operation technique. So that's my goal. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. All right, so if you want like to, uh, this person is list factors that affect the skin integrity. So moisture affects the skin integrity. Nutrition affects the skin integrity. Mm -hmm. Mobility affects the skin integrity. Hygiene, the continence uh, 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 affects uh, skin integrity. Does that make sense? So in other words, this, this student, when he is gonna be doing presentation, so what am I anticipating this student is gonna be talking about factors that affect the skin integrity, which are moisture, mobility, nutrition, positioning in the bed. So I know that, this student is gonna be talking about this. Does that make sense? All right, so like after he does the presentation, so you're gonna be knowing about these factors, how they affect on the integrity of the skin. So in other words, if as nurses we didn't put energy or effort 
to take into consideration these factors, our patients are gonna be having a skin breakdown. Is that clear? Am I making sense? All right, so then, distinguish primary intention healing, secondary intention healing, and tertiary intention healing. So the, the he's talking about, he's gonna be talking about the healing process. Assess and categorize a pressure injury based on pressure injury a staging system. So I know that he's gonna be talking about the staging of wounds. So there is a stage one, a stage two, a stage three, a stage four wounds. So in other words, these, these students, this student, particular student, when he's gonna be talking on his PowerPoint presentation, he's gonna be discussing about the staging of the wounds. Is that clear? Okay. So differentiate the kinds of chronic wounds and how to assess a wound. All right, so like, oh, okay, so uh, chronic wounds, uh, so, um, so he's gonna talk about chronic wounds. So this is not very clear, but like, okay, so. All right, to define irrigation and describe the steps of irrigating a wound. So like he's this patient, this student is gonna be talking about irrigating wounds. If you're not sure, if you're not sure how to write it, ask. Is that okay? Yeah, yeah you can ask, right? Okay, so you're gonna say, this is what I'm gonna be talking, like is this, composing this behavioral objective fits whatever I'm gonna be talking. Am I making sense? Yeah, all right. So take this as a reference, in other words. Is that clear? Okay, so then well, let me see. If it's the verbs are not posted, I'll post the verbs so that you will know what verbs to use. Is that clear? Mm -hmm. Definitely, those three verbs, you cannot use it. Okay, I didn't, oh, let's see here. Did I put the, uh, uh, how to write learning objectives? So this was, we were going to discuss this last week. So in other words, last week's uh, material and this week's material kind of, I have to condense together. All right, so, and then we'll, we'll go over. And then, so I put the uh, study guide Study guides. Okay, I put this. Do you see? Oh, I didn't. What is this? It's a student board. So I didn't put the study guide. I thought okay. I put the study 16. guide. Yeah. Okay. Go down to week 16. 16. Yeah. Yeah, but like it's only. No, keep going. But right there. Yeah, this is only the final exam. No, wait, I see it on my on Canvas right now. Is this the right? Is this the right? Is this the right semester? <laughs> You know, this is the right semester. It's all the way at the bottom. Yeah, it's all the way. You scroll all the way to the bottom. All the way to the bottom. The because way. I know I put it. All the way up. There you go. Yeah. All right. So this is the study guide. Do you see? So like this study guide was put by Dr. Christensen. This is Christensen. This is Christensen. And these are like, I went over and then made it like more specific. Does that make sense? Did you look at it? No. Did you look at my study guide? Okay, so kind of when you read it, as if I'm talking. Is that clear? Whatever Christensen had been, done, it's like a table. All right, so like I left both. Is that clear? Or I didn't, re I didn't remove Christensen. Some people might be finding it beneficial. Is that clear, guys? Okay, all right. So uh, are you, do you think like you're in good stay, start as far as 318? Yes. What is it bothering? I know like three, 360 uh, exercise questions are too many. <laughs> uh, but it's part of the learning. Yeah. Yeah. All right, okay. All right, so uh, there is, the syllabus is updated. When is the uh, medication exam? The 20th. All right, so in other words, like it's gonna be, I think it's 40 minutes. Uh, uh, so you're gonna come here exactly at eight, we're gonna be starting. And then so it is anticipated that like, I think it's 12 questions. And if you made one mistake, 11 out of 12, you still pass. But if you did like 10 over 12, you don't pass, all right? So then we're gonna be remediating you, like we're gonna be meeting with Talin, Bakalian and myself, you know, like after class, so we're gonna go over why, what did you do a mistake? What was the mistake? And then Talin will go over and I'll go over and then these students are gonna be given another opportunity. Mm -hmm. Second time around, you have to pass. Is that clear? Mm -hmm. So I know it's very, mm -hmm. 
stressful because like it kind of determines like your kind of future. But like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it's like, it's like, it's because like obviously medication exam is important because you can't do the wrong medication because the I mean you know like it's that preventive. Yes. Yeah, I mean, there, there was one person who, who didn't pass and then he was out of the program. But only one? Yeah. But you can okay. get two wrong? Can you get two wrong? No. no. One. one. Yeah. Take it very seriously. I mean, it's a matter of practice. There's I mean, no partial you know, so credit either. It's, 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 uh -huh. There's no partial credit if you're right or wrong? Yeah, because it's, uh, because it's medication. I mean, uh, you know, the, the dosage can be rounded because it says rounded to the closest tent, right? Okay, but like if you have done the whole uh, thing wrong, you know, so there is no partial credit. I mean, the person, I, I mean, this is medication. It's very detrimental. The person might die. The patient might die. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. yeah. So we can't play with this, right? I have a question about the exam. There's three different methods that we use and they're all to determine like the same thing. It's okay. Can we just use one? Yeah, because like the, the, the thing, obviously when you're taking the medication exam, you're gonna be given the scratch paper, all right? So that day, the, the please arrive early because if you're gonna be using the scratch paper, I have to sign you the scratch paper. Does that make sense? So it's another process in other words. So you're gonna be signing that you're here and that every scratch paper I have to sign. You come to me here, you sign, and then you come with this, your scratch paper, your name is on it, because what am I signing? Does that make sense? So everybody has like, you have to have a scratch paper, you put your name on it, and then everybody lines, lines up here, and then so like I'm signing the scratch paper, you're signing that you took a scratch paper, then you go. When you're done, you bring the scratch paper back, and then I look to the name and I write next to it, okay. Does that make sense? So in other words, this is taking extra time, but I have to imp I have to execute it because I have to be fair. Does that make sense, guys? So for that reason, like, you know, I, I have to arrive early also, obviously, that day, because this takes time. If we're gonna be starting exactly at eight, we have to make sure that you're 44 people. So 44 times I'm gonna be signing. Does that make sense? Right, so, and then, um, uh, yeah, the time is 40 minutes or 45 minutes, I don't remember now. Would you say that the practice exam on time is similar to? Yes, okay. yes. The practice exam that I've put is exactly the same. Okay. I mean, there is nothing to worry about, you know? So, like you practice, you're gonna pass. It's not that this, this is something obscure that is like, it's unachievable, and then like, you know, we're in the mercy of the test. No, it's not like that. Okay, so like you, you practice the practice exam, you're gonna pass it. And then, so uh, the, the, the practice, like the, the way you solved it, I don't see it because it's on the scratch paper and I don't look at it. All I care is the answer that you enter it. Does that make sense, guys? Yes. All right, all right, very good. So, uh, do you feel like that you, uh, you kind of, this is only the second week anyway, you know, so like, do you feel like you broke the ice? No. Not yet? No. Okay, that's fine. That's fine, that's fine. It will take time. And what, what I ask that whoever has like a little bit more confidence, help those who have less confidence. Because like, you know, I can, I can be here to give you words of encouragement, but each other give it to, give each other words of encouragement too. Is that clear? It gets better, I mean, you know, so, uh, people have taken this class, they have passed, they have graduated, you can do it too. All right, okay, yes. You know, never mind, I'm fine. I this all right so this is a long powerpoint but like at the uh, at the back of the powerpoint it is like the practice that you're going to be learning in the lab what did you do in the lab last week okay 
there is going to be in the lab like how to administer medication is that clear so it's kind of the powerpoint the slides that is at the back of this powerpoint deck you're going to be doing in the lab is that clear perfect all right so um All right, medication administration safety. All right, so like, why do we put a lot of energy on medication administration? <coughs> because once you make an error, the result is detrimental. We cannot go back. You gave the wrong medication, the patient died. We're not gonna go back and then revive the patient. It's gone. So like, in other words, it's very detrimental, the result. It's not like, you know, so you, uh, your construction, you build a wall, it's not fine. All right, so we can kind of destruct the wall and then re re reconstruct the wall, even though it's going to be taking time, money, but like nobody dies. <coughs> but like when you give wrong the medication, a person dies. All right, so for that reason, it's very serious, right? So, and uh, for that reason, even uh, when you are, you are hired, you're going to be passing medication exam before you are hired also. As instructors, you know, so like if I'm gonna be teaching in a hospital, I have to pass medication exam. If I'm not pass, if I don't pass medication exam, then I'm not allowed to teach. Does that make sense? It's very stressful on me also. You know, like when I was teaching at the Pacific University, I was uh, going to teach, uh, I was teaching rehab nursing, and then so I was placed in uh, Rancho Los Amigos in Downey, rehab hospital. Do you know about it? It's country hospital. And so like, I, I'm gone, I'm, I'm, uh, I went there, so like obviously like nobody's laughing at you or smiling, you know, like it's so, like the buildings are all old, like it looks like a dungeon, you know, so they put me in a small room, really, like, and then my purse, my everything is outside, like what did I do, like as if like I'm in a prison. And then, uh, literally it looks like a prison, you know, when the door is closed and then there are these bars, this little window with the bars, like already psychologically, even if I'm not scared, I'm gonna be scared, you know? So, and then on, on, on top of it, I'm saying, you know, like if I don't pass this exam, it's not only that, you know, I don't pass, but like I'm not, if I'm not allowed to teach here, then all my students are not gonna have an instructor. Then, you know, like the dean is gonna have another uh, search for another teacher, you know, like there is so much stress in my head. <laughs> so, and then, so they're, they're so serious. And then, so I only can have calculator that is, that is like from dollar store. Also, you you cannot use, uh, it's in the syllabus, right? You have to buy a calculator that is from dollar store, not your iPhones, all right? Uh, is a graphing calculator okay or just basic? Basic, very basic. I have few, like I think I have few, like uh, I can share it. Is this so. something? Is it Okay, yeah, but the basic calculator that like we used it before the iPhone was there. Yeah. <laughs> but like if you don't know like what was it, you know, so anyway, so the moral of the story, you know, so like it's very serious that you pass the medication exam. So like every place that you're gonna be working, this is required from you. Luckily, things are better. You know why? Because technology is helping us, right? So like in the old days, you know, so like you you had the whole bottle of uh, Zoloft, for example, like in the patient's um, cap, uh, cubicle. Now, the pharmacy, like then we came to a place that the pharmacy kind of, oh, how many um, LASIKs that, that person is gonna be needing per day? In that cubicle, there is only one or two. If it, the patient is needing two, there is two. So in other words, excess is not there because a lot of time, medication error happens because there is excess of it. But if it is only provided the number of pills that you're going to be using that day, what is the potential of you make overdosing that patient? Less, because you're only given two pills and the patient is going to be taking every 12 hours. So that's it. You don't have extra. Does that make sense? So over time, you know, like this um, uh, medication administration got improved with the improvement of technology. Is that clear? Yeah. Why? Because Institute of Medi uh, Medicine report said in 1999 that, okay, to err is human. Okay, we cannot debate that we are all human and we can make a mistake because we're not God, right? So like every one of us can make a mistake. We kind of, that is accepted because it's purely, it's the human nature. If you are tired, if you're anxious, what is the potential of making mistake is more. 
Is that clear? So for that reason, you know, like if you were working double shift, you are so tired and you gave medication that was wrong. And then, you know, like it is in the court in front of the judge, you cannot say I, I was working 16 hours and it was my 16th hour. I was so tired, I couldn't distinguish between 20 and 40, I gave 40. <laughs> and then the person died. The, the judge doesn't, I mean, as much as like it's remorseful, yeah, you know, we feel with you that you were working 16 hours, that wasn't a reason for you to make a mistake, like okay, and then the person died. Does that make sense? So in other words, like if you're so tired that you cannot <coughs> perform, you have to tell to your supervisor, I'm not safe. There is nothing wrong. Okay, there is no no shame. You know, so like I'm tired, my brain is not working, I'm like, I'm stretched so thin, like I'm, I'm seeing everything too. Like how safe you are. You're not doing good to yourself, you're not doing good to the, your patient. And then be candid about it. Does that make sense, guys? All right, because like, once one mistake, it is detrimental, okay? And then your license is gonna be revoked also. Mm -hmm. You know, like, oh, now I'm scared of you, then you don't even have a license now. Like, I'm talking about revoking. <laughs> you know, so, but it's the reality of life. Because once you are finished uh, the education, so Dr. Child writes, uh, signs the papers that, like, you went through all the required uh, courses that the Board of Registered Nursing requires us to teach you and you passed all successfully and you did all the clinical hours and you're ready to go and then sit for the NCLEX. Does that make sense? So if you didn't complete the educational requirements that the board imposes us, uh, uh, imposes on us, you're not gonna be able to sit for the NCLEX. Does that make sense? So once you have an NCLEX, uh, you pass the NCLEX, so it says that like you are safe on the, you have the safe foundation to operate as a registered nurse. Does it say that you're an expert? No. You have the foundation to operate independently and safely. All right, so now once they give you the license, what does that mean? The license is always renewed, right? Every two years we're renewing the license. So if there is anything wrong that happened in practice, people can complain and the board is gonna come and investigate. Is that clear? Since you're working with human beings, so like it is con uh, it's under consumer affairs. So in other words, Board of Registered <coughs> Nursing has the responsibility to protect the consumer that you are serving. Is that clear? All right, so for that reason, like every two years, we're uh, renewing our license to see that, okay, our education is up to date and then we're keeping uh, pace with the current trend, uh, current technological or educational trend, right? Okay, so, and then, like, it, uh, so I gave, um, uh, I, I was teaching the RN refresher course for Azusa Pacific University for the longest time, 25 years. And so, I, every time that I'm teaching, there is like one nurse whose uh, uh, license is revoked and the Board of Registered Nursing requires them to take a refresher course and then be bodied or precepted by a clinician on the unit to validate that, validate that this person is safe for them to reconsider, to reinstate the license. Does that make sense? So in other words, do people make mistake? Yes. Do, do, do license get revoked? Yes. But what is the intervention? So that like you go get the course again and then so like uh, I had really, they sent paperwork, a special, a special paperwork that it needs to be filled in and then so special hour, like however hours, they have to be precepted, and then so that the case is like reconsidered and the person's license is reinstated. Does that make sense? So in other words, it's a serious thing, like once you have a license, so it's not the end of it, like you have to protect it. Is that clear? Mm -hmm. Okay, now, so because of that, because like, uh, because like uh, being, uh, uh, making a mistake is the human, so then like we said, the joint, the, the joint commission came and said, okay, let's not use abbreviation. Because like if we're using abbreviation, so the other person is reading it differently and then so they can make a mistake. Okay, so one example, so like it's, a, so if it is like 40 units of insulin, all right, so 40 units of insulin, so let's say, if you write 40 units insulin, you have to write units, does that make sense? If you write 40, you look at this. Does that make sense? Sometimes it looks like uh, 400, okay? Or four units, four units. If you write like this, okay, so 
four units. Okay, is this four units or 40? Is that clear? Mm -hmm. So for that reason, like the Joint Commission is saying, don't use abbreviation, use the whole ver word. Is that clear? Mm -hmm. So that way, like there is less potential for mistake. Okay, so, and then uh, ISMP, Medication Safety Alert Institute for Safe Medication Practices. And then, so then they came and then they said, the barcode. What is the barcode? So the barcode is, okay, so like if you're gonna be giving Glasix for a patient, for example, so you're opening the pixels and then so you're, uh, you're scanning the Lasix. All right, so the computer knows that this is Lasix 40 milligram. Then you're going to the patient and then so you're scanning the patient's armband and then so the computer matches it. So this patient is uh, scheduled at 8 a.m. for 40 milligrams of Lasix, so it matches. Does that make sense? So in other words, it kind of knows that it's the right patient and the right medication. It doesn't mean that like you're gonna be ignoring to do the six rules at the right patient, the right medication, the right route, the right time, right? Still, we have to follow that, but the computer is helping us. Does that make sense? So if by mistake, I went to another patient and then he doesn't have 40 milligram Lasix, and then like, you know, it's barcoded. So the computer is gonna alert that, okay, under this patient's profile, there is no Lasix. Why are you gonna give the patient the Lasix? Does that make sense? So in other words, the technology has helped us. Like, you know, it's, it's a good thing in other words, all right? So when I was working at Cedar sinai so at, at there, you know, so like the doctor writes the order and then the pharmacy enters or the nurse enters, but if the nurse enters it, the pharmacy has to validate it. If the pharmacy enters it, the nurse has to validate it. Does that make sense? In other words, the doctor's order is read by two people. Is that clear? So in other words, like two people are reading it. Okay, so then it is imported into medical administration records. So all this technologically advanced interventions we're doing to prevent medication errors. Does that make sense? Okay, and then also, yeah. When you scan it, will it actually record the time? It will record okay. the time. And, and then the PIXIS, you know, so like it allows you, so if it's eight o'clock medication, mm -hmm. you're allowed to give it at 7.30 mm -hmm. or 8.30. So it's only you have the window of half an hour before and half an hour after. Mm -hmm. And let's say like the patient is sick or like he didn't, he wouldn't take the medication. Now like you're more than half an hour and then it doesn't really, so you have to write why did you give it late. Mm -hmm. And then you have to write patient uh, did not feel well, asked to, for the medication to be given later, and then I'm, I'm giving one hour later. Does okay. that make sense? Mm -hmm. So in other words, like it's always alerting you. Mm -hmm. And then one good thing, as I said, you know, so like uh, the, the, the patient's cubicles do not contain extra medication. Mm -hmm. All right, so, okay. All right, so to safely, uh, to safely administer, accurately administer medications, you need to know uh, legal and ethical aspects of healthcare. We one uh, one legal aspect. I said it like if you're tired and you made a mistake, the judge is not going to forgive you, right? So so like you have to remember that. And then the other thing that if we are dealing with the consumer, and then consumer is protected by the board of registered nursing. So they have a voice. In other words, like okay. So and then the other thing is like we have to understand the pharmacology. In the pharmacology, what do we have? We have the pharmacokinetics and pharmacodynamics. What is pharmacokinetics? you know how the medication moves in your body is that clear so obviously like uh, my head is hurting so I'm taking two Tylenol so it crawls down from the mouth to go to the uh, stomach it's going it's going to be dissolved in the stomach it's going to be absorbed and then so like it's going to be acting on the sensory nerves and then it's going to numb the pain sensation is that clear so we have to understand like how did this medication work so how the pharmacokinetics all right so and then, so if I'm gonna be taking insulin, Lantus, Lantus insulin, I'm go, where am I gonna inject? I'm gonna inject on my abdomen, right? Because insulin is only injected. We, we can uh, swallow in, in insulin, right? Why? Because the gastric acid in the, uh, in the, in the stomach, it will um, not make the insulin survive. Otherwise, like nobody's gonna be scared of insulin. 
insulin is always uh, uh, in injection people are scared right okay so when we're giving insulin so where are we giving we're giving into the adipose tissue so the insulin goes into the adipose tissue and sits there like if you're going to be giving glantis you're going to be learning glantis is basal insulin what is basal insulin you inject and 24 hours you have insulin does that make sense like it's basal insulin it's basal insulin 24 hours plateau insulin that's lentus you're going to be giving lentus to a lot of your patients is that clear so so where do you give the lentus in the abdomen why because in the abdomen there is the adipose tissue so what happens like lentus is uh, the ph is four so what is our pH? Seven. Seven point three five, right? Seven point three five. So because lentus is four, what is four? It's less than seven point three five. What is it? Acidic. Acidic. So when you inject an acid into a base, what happens? It crystallizes. It turns into crystal and sits in the adipose tissue. Little by little, little by little, little by little, little by little, it decrystallizes. And then by the time all the molecule is decrystallized, it's 24 hours. So what did you get? You got 24 hours of insulin release by one injection. Does that make sense? Why? Because the what was the pharmacokinetic? It is pH of 4, goes into a pH of 7.35, it crystallizes, and then it sits in the adipose tissue. And then, like, you know, it, it sits there. It's, it's so nice to have an adipose tissue for medication purposes, right? And so, like, decrystallization, little by little, over 24 hours, then you have, like, release of insulin over 24 hours without peak. It's plateau. You see, this is pharmacokinetic. So you know, like, how did this medication got injected and how did it travel in the body to make an effect? Is that clear, guys? And then, what is pharmacodynamic? Pharmacodynamic, how is the body responding to that medication? Is that clear? All right, so every time we're taking medication, we need that problem to be solved. Does that make sense? So, for example, uh, um, sulfanilureas. Right, so they were the old. Now we're not using it. Like I'm always give, uh, so I'm always going to give uh, examples from diabetes because that's what I do. Right? Okay. So, <laughs> <laughs> so, so like by the time like you're done with this course, like you're going to be saying enough of diabetes. <laughs> <laughs> like I'm, I'm warning you, but it's not a bad thing, you know. Like it's a good uh, specialty. Right, okay, anyway, all right, so uh, sulfanilureas are the, the pills that were the old pills. Now, like, we have a lot of new medications. Nobody's using those medications anymore. But what were the sulfanilureas? Sulfanilureas, they go to the pancreas and then say to the beta cell, or right, secrete more insulin, make more insulin, make more insulin, so that that's how, like, they were going to control the blood sugars. Does that make sense? All right, so now, if somebody's pancreas all the beta cells are exhausted. There is no more beta cell left. They all are exhausted. And you take the sulfanilurea, and then sulfanilurea goes and tells to the beta cell, make more insulin, make more insulin. What is the pancreas gonna say? I don't even have beta cell to make more insulin. Does that make sense? So in other words, you take the medication, do you see any change in blood sugar? No, why? The response pharmacodynamics, you know, like what, how, how did the body respond to it? without changing the blood sugar because the beta cell that is supposed to manufacture more insulin because some pill told the beta cell, okay, make more insulin. I'm giving you an order. Okay, you can give all the order. If there is no beta cell, there is not going to be insulin produced. Does that make sense? So in other words, that medication failed. That's the pharmacodynamics. That's the body's response to that medication because you can give all the medication you want. You're not going to be seeing any change in blood sugar because the beta cell is not there. And then so as much as the, the medication is saying, make, make, make. So, okay, you, you can tell me all you want. I don't have the beta cell for me to make you the, the insulin. Does that make sense, guys? Mm -hmm. Well, that's the pharmacodynamics, how the body responds as a result of ingesting a pill. Is that clear, guys? Okay, so obviously, what are we going to need to know? Life sciences. Uh, we're part of human body is part of the life sciences because we're a living organism, right? So like we, we are made of cells, the, the cell membranes, so all this, like the basic biology that uh, 
applies to animal kingdom, humans are part of it, right? So, and then a, a human anatomy and physiology, we have to know like how the, uh, where are the organs, like how the medication is gonna be affecting the organ and then the physiology and the pathophysiology and mathematics. What is pathophysiology? Uh, the physiology is normal physiology, the pathophysiology is something went wrong. Is that clear? All right, so, uh, so um, for example, like when we're uh, eating the food, so the food goes into the stomach, so it gets digested, it turns into sugar, right? And it gets off the stomach because like the body cells need the sugar. That sugar has to be absorbed or utilized by body cells for energy. Do you agree? Otherwise, why are we eating, right? Why do we eat? We eat because like the sugar that is produced from the food, it is taken from all the body cells that are gonna be burning that sugar for energy so that we can function, right? Okay, so, and then what do we need with it? An insulin, so to help for this sugar to be utilized for energy. Do you agree? All right, so the, the sugar comes out of the food from the stomach and then the insulin released from the pancreas and then they're working together, right? They're working together. What's the role of the insulin? it opens the doors of the cell, sugar can go into the cell. Is that clear, guys? So for that reason, every time we're eating, so we're generating sugar. Are we eating just for fun? No, because that sugar is needed for fuel by body cells to be used for energy. Otherwise, our cells do not work and then we're gonna be like, <clears throat> like no energy, no function. Does that make sense? So for the cells to function, they need fuel. What's the fuel? The sugar. How do you get the sugar from food? Is that clear, guys? So it comes out into the bloodstream, but the sugar itself cannot be used by the cells without the presence of insulin. Is that clear, guys? So insulin is coming from where? From the pancreas, and they're working together, right? Okay, so now, so the, the brain uses it, the muscle uses it, and then the liver secures some sugar in it to be used during sleep. Is that clear? Because that when you're sleeping, are we, use, are we eating? No. So where is the sugar coming from? So some sugar in, during the day, it got stored in the liver to be used at night. Am I making sense? All right. So then the liver at night releases the sugar out all through the night. And then so what's going to happen? So that our body cells can utilize that sugar and then we're not dead. We're sleeping. Is that clear, guys? So in the morning, what should the liver do? Close, right? Why? Because in the morning, what are you gonna do? Eat. Uh, eat. So when you eat, who's gonna turn into sugar? The food. So do you need the liver to send the sugar from the pantry out? No. So the, the, the role of the liver ends when? In the morning. Am I making sense? Right? Are you with me? All right. So, the liver is confused and still releasing it, still releasing it. This person wakes up, checks the blood sugar like 200. And then he says like, I didn't eat anything. Last meal was six o'clock. I slept with 130, I'm waking up with, with 200. Does that make sense? Can this happen? Yes, because the liver is confused and it's still releasing in the morning, thinking that it's still at night. Does that make sense? What is this? This is pathophysiology. Am I making sense? It's going something wrong. Now we have to find the medication to tell the liver at 5 a.m. like stop. So metformin does that. Does that make sense? So now like when you're under, when you're giving medication, you have to understand like I'm giving this medication. Where is the defect? Where is the problem? How is this medication helping to solve this problem? Am I making sense, guys? Okay, so don't, you know, like at this level, you're not gonna be saying, oh, metformin is for blood sugar for diabetes, that's not enough. You're not LVN, is that clear? Mm -hmm. So you're above. So when you're becoming a scientist, you have to understand the pathophysiology and you have to tell me that, okay, this is where this is. something wrong is happening and this medication is gonna be helping to solve this problem. Am I making sense, guys? So you have to understand normal physiology so that you can identify the pathophysiology. If you don't know the normal physiology, and then so like you cannot detect the pathophysiology. And then so always you have to remember that the medication is given to solve a problem. Is that clear? All right, so obviously when we're giving med med uh, medication, so we have to calculate it. Mathematics is important because calculation is important. Luckily, like on this, the, your generation, you don't have to calculate, pharmacy calculates it for you. 
Does that make sense? Like even the IVs are like all, all dissolved and then the label is really put nice, you know, so like you have to read it. In the, when I was a new nurse, uh, we had to inject the medication into the IV bag and, and dissolve it. Does that make sense? So like those days are over. So like in other words, uh, there is less potential for mistake because like the pharmacy is like in a little room, concentrated and doing all the dissolving without any distraction. Is that clear? Okay, it doesn't mean that you're not gonna read the label though. Please read the label because like, uh, yeah, please read the label. <laughs> okay, all right guys, medication, all right, so what is medication name? So there is generic and there is brand, right? So what is like, uh, uh, Tylenol is brand, and then acetaminophen is generic. Is that clear? So usually what they do, this pharmaceutical company is like they put a lot of money to do research, to find a new medication, right? So when they find a new medication, they kind of reserve the patent. So they, they say, you know, we found this medication, we put a lot of money, now like this molecule is us. Nobody can use it. Does that make sense? So then like they market it with like a, uh, brand name and then it, it's very expensive but so what is the FDA has said like you can't be the king forever right so like in other words you know it's like you have 10 or 15 years to hold on to this molecule after that you have to release it does that make sense so in other words those four or 15 years they make their money and then so you see the pharmaceutical reps they go to the doctors they promote the medication and nowadays, you know, like the pharmaceutical reps are pharmacists, believe it or not, you know, because like they're educating the, the, doc the doctors, not only to sell the medication, but to kind of educate the composition of the medication. Is that clear? And then like how it works, like on the body system. And then they, they're more knowledgeable in other words. Okay, so for example, Lovonox. What is Lovonox? Low weight heparin that you give a, a, a sub Q. Have you given Lovonox? Have you heard about Lovonox? It's heparin, like, you know, it's anti, so like it doesn't let the blood, to, the, the factors to coagulate the blood, right? So after 15 years, it became generic. Now like you can see the generic of it, is that clear? So every medication, it starts as brand, and it's promoted, it's expensive, but like there is a time limit, I think it's 10 or 15 years. After that, the molecule is given, to another pharmaceutical company that makes that medication under generic name and it is cheaper, all right? So now, glucophage was like metformin. It, it was the brand name, it came 1996 and then it was like very expensive. Now metformin is like very cheap. Everybody can have metformin. Even, even if somebody is very poor, can afford metformin. Is that clear? Because it's the generic of it. Is that clear, guys? Okay, all right, yes. so. Um, with the same happened for like the COVID vaccines? Uh, it was just, it was like no charge. You different. know, I, that's, vaccine is not my strength, but I don't think there is generic vaccine. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. just one. Yeah, and plus vaccine that like, you're not taking every day. Okay. Yeah. I know there are different manufacturers making the same, like the Pfizer made it, Moderna made it, Johnson and Johnson, Johnson and Johnson made it, but they're all brand. Okay, yeah. Okay, okay. So when in doubt, look it up. All right, guys. Effect of medication on the body symptoms, symptoms of medications, medications desired. All right. So now. Every time, like when I was case manager as nurse practitioner, I was going to the houses. At the time, like we didn't have the iPhone. So like I put all the patient's medications on the table. I kind of categorized it because sometimes one doctor gives one medication, like the primary care, they go to cardiologist, cardiologist gives another blood pressure medication. One gives Zestril, the other one gives Zacupril. They're both ACE inhibitors. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. And now the patient is taking both, like mm -hmm. over medicating. Mm -hmm. Right? Okay, at the time, you know, like the, the, the uh, now CVS or um, CVS or Rite Aid or Walgreens. So like if you take your medications from there, the pharmacist is gonna be telling you, okay, these are two medications that are under the same category. You can't, you're over, over medicating yourself. But if one medication is from Walgreens, the other one is from a private pharmacist, they won't know because the computers are not connected. Does that make sense, guys? All right, so now, like, you know, for that reason, it is advisable that you use one pharmacy so that the pharmacies can be a resource also to identify if there is any problems, okay? So, 
If I was in doubt, I'd always had the medication book with me. I called from the house to the Glendale Adventist, to the pharmacy, and then sometimes the pharmacy says, you know what, that's not my strength, that medication. I say, like, get me a pharmacist who's, who knows that medication. I'm not gonna leave the patient's room, house. I mean, you know, like, this is very important. You know, like, I'm here, I'm a clinician. I don't know. I'm not gonna give a doubt, like, uh, la, 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 and then leave, and then the patient is gonna be more confused. Plus that these are all elderly with chronic diseases. They don't even have much of a resource. So I didn't leave till I got an answer. Does that make sense, guys? So you can't, this is not a joke. Okay, you can't play with it. And then, so like, as I said, then, then the, the herbal medications, that confused me more. That's not my strength, because like in my training, we didn't learn the herbal medications. And you're not gonna be learning here either. And the herbal medications, they're not FDA controlled. People go and buy it. And then so, but there is drug-drug interaction also with their prescription medications. Does that make sense, guys? So in other words, like it's extra effort. You have to sit down and do research because you have to help your patient. Just because they're herbal medication, it doesn't mean that it's safe. Is that clear? Mm -hmm. So for a reason, like if you don't know, accept the fact that this is not my, my specialty. I don't have much of an experience, but I'm gonna check. Is that clear, guys? Okay. All right, so you know that the medications come in different forms. So there is the solid liquid and then oral forms and then uh, topical, parenteral, and also like the ones that you instill in the eyes, in the ears. The other one thing that I'm gonna be telling you, so um, see uh, when uh, you're working with patients, I see I'm a geriatric nurse practitioner, so there was higher potential that for my patients to deteriorate faster, right? Okay, so like, I mean, if they have a stroke at the beginning, you know, like they can, they can chew it like with the apple sauce, you can put it to the side of the mouth that is still strong. And eventually what's gonna happen, that side gets weaker too. So what are we gonna do? We're gonna give like, eventually we put the NG tube, then they're gonna go into G tube, right? What are we gonna do? That's part of the process. Now, these medications have to change. If they were taking dilantin, for example, capsule, so you're not, what are you gonna do? You're gonna call the pharmacy and you're gonna say to the pharmacist, now this patient has a G tube, NG, we, we, we're done with the NG tube. NG tube is not gonna be permanent, you know? So the, the G tube, so like, can we modify the medications? Is that clear? So in other words, like dilating comes in elixir format, also liquid. Now like we have to change it into liquid. You have to tell them, is that clear? And then so, and then the other thing is like a sustained release. What is sustained release? So like you take like Procardia, it is calcium channel blocker. It is sustained release. So in other words, what is sustained release? There is like a coating coating on top of the medication. The grain is like inside the coat. So like you swallow and it goes into the stomach and little by little like the coat dissolves and le leaks the grains out. Does that make sense? Little by little it, the, the coat dissolves and then leaks the grains out. So by the time all the grain is out, it's 24 hours. Does that make sense? So you took one pill, but in the stomach, it kind of released little by little. And then so like now you have like 24 hour uh, effect. You, for that reason, you cannot crush that pill. If you crush that pill, what did you do? You took out of the shell and you gave the patient the whole grain at once, what happens to the blood pressure? Now it can go down. Does that make sense? Now like you, I had to call the pharmacy. I said, now like the Procardia, we can't use the sustained release because the patient is on G-tube. Give me Procardia 10 milligram, 10 milligram, 10 milligram TID because like without the coat, does that make sense? So rather than 30 milligram uh, sustained release because it's not gonna work, otherwise like you're giving the 30 at once. Is that clear guys? So this is like, you have to know these things. Is that clear? Okay. Professor, huh. um, question, is the sustained release the same as extended release? Yes, okay. the same thing. A sustained release or extended release is the same thing. Yeah, very good. The, the fact is only like you have to understand that they have a shell and then the grain is in the shell, and then the shell lets the grain to leak out little by little. So that's like the general information. How come, how come you, why, why, why try to confuse it, like, like sustained release and extended release? Why, why use both? What? <coughs> yeah, I don't know. Like ES, extended release, yeah. X, XL, or extended, yeah. I don't know, we have to ask a pharmacist, why, did they, why didn't they standardize, like one terminology, right? Yeah, yeah. so I, I agree. Okay. All right, so now the bioavailability is a percent of the drug in the bloodstream that is able to have active effect. All right, so now, uh, so usually like uh, there are medications, especially uh, psych medications, 
So like uh, the, the, the patient is like, I'm depressed, I'm like this. But like you go to the psychiatrist, the psychiatrist give medication. Then one week later, you're still having the same symptoms, right? So in other words, these medications need to establish a level before they can be effective. Am I making sense? So for that reason, that's the bioavailability. So in other words, like we have to establish some kind of a concentration of that medication before seeing results. So for that reason, like we have to educate this patient, don't get discouraged because you need time to see symptom relief. Is that clear, guys? Also, oh, that's the bioavailability. Okay. So, and then obviously distribution of the med medication is also affected by the cardiovascular system. Like if somebody has all blue, they have peripheral circulation that is compromised. So how is that medication gonna go to your periphery? The blood cannot go, the medication cannot go. Does that make sense? If the vessels are like uh, constricted or the arteries are half blocked, less of a medication is gonna infuse there because less blood is going. Am I making sense guys? All right, so, and then, uh, okay, so, uh, and then metabolism. So now every time you're taking medication, what is it? It's a chemical. You're taking a chemical. So medications are not innocent, all right? So like every medication has some kind of a side effect because you're ingesting a chemical, okay? Remember that. So the chemical is gonna be metabolized. So it, 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 it's gonna be less dangerous by going through the liver. Is that clear? So the liver is kind of making it less of a chemical because otherwise imagine that like you ingest chemical, like, oh, who wants to ingest chemicals, right? Okay, so, so it's metabolized in the liver and eventually it's gonna be excreted. So excreted through the kidneys mainly. So all the blood goes to the kidney, the kidney is a smart. It has selective membrane. What is a selective membrane? So all the blood comes to the kidney, selective membrane is just like a sieve, sieve. So like, and it's very tightly interwoven. And then the kidney knows, okay, so you are a byproduct of the aspirin, you have to go. So it lets it go with the uh, urine. So when you get the urine, you don't see, you see like only yellow liquid, but inside there is a lot of chemicals, like it's not even sediment, like you can touch the urine, it's like very smooth. But like in it, there is a lot of chemicals that the body is excreting because the body doesn't need it. Does that make sense? So for that reason, the kidneys are smart. Like anything that is waste, toxin, it lets it go. Anything that it needs the body, it sends it back. For example, red blood cell, it needs, the body needs it. So for reason, the red blood cell goes back to the central circulation. If we don't have red blood cell in the urine or protein or albumin, these are big molecules. They cannot leak from that tight interwoven selective membrane, and then they go back into the central circulation. Is that clear? So always remember, the urine is a good thing because like it's carrying all our waste, even though there is no sediment. You, told, you touch it and it's smooth like yellow liquid. Is that clear, guys? Mm -hmm. All right, so uh, absorption, we said it. Like, okay, so most of the time, so where are we? Uh, we're, we're getting tablets, right? So like we're ingesting. So you're taking Tylenol, you're taking aspirin, you're taking all your pills. They go to the, to where? They're gonna go to the stomach and it's gonna be dissolved. All right, so now if you have somebody saying, oh, somebody's like, you know, like as if somebody's stabbing my, my heart, I'm having difficulty. What is that? You're, you, you, you have a, a family member, what do you do? You're gonna call 911, right? So like, first things, what are you thinking? You're thinking that this person is having angina. What is angina? Angina is like not enough blood went into the heart muscle. How big is heart muscle? Fist size, all right? So like fist size, like it's a muscle. It's meat, it's like red meat, right? Okay, it's just red meat. To think about that, it's a red muscle and it's fist size and it's a heart, it's called cardiac muscle. So that meat has to be red meat. So how is it red? Because blood brings oxygen and nutrients, all right? So the coronary arteries are infusing this piece of red meat with a lot of nutrients and oxygen. For that reason, this meat stays red and it's healthy and it's pumping. Okay, now suddenly this coronary artery is there, there spastic, spastic. I smoke, for example. What do I do? Smoking always spasm the vessels, all right? Every time we're smoking, we're, we're making the, our vessels spastic. There is no, uh, we all know this. This, 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 this is no secret, right? So in other words, like, if, so if the coronary artery is a spastic, so what is a spastic? 
it's tight. How is the lumen? It's a smaller. How can the blood flow? Not easy. All right, so what happens to that little meat? It's not getting enough blood. So if it's not getting enough blood, it's not getting enough oxygen. It's not getting enough nutrients. So what's gonna happen? It's gonna start hurting. Does the color change from the red to purple probably? Yes, right, it will, it will because like red meat is red because oxygen is there. Does that make sense, guys? And now it's gonna start hurting. It's gonna hurt as if somebody's stabbing. Okay, call 911. The 911 comes, what do they do? What do they put? Nitroglycerin under the tongue. They're not gonna give pill. Why? Nitroglycerin is absorbed under the tongue. All right, so like in, in other words, absorb and it goes into the bloodstream right away. Does that make sense? It bypasses the GI tract. It bypasses the GI tract because by the time it goes into the stomach, it gets dissolved and it goes into the bloodstream, it's gonna take longer. We don't have time. Is that clear, guys? So for that reason, in this situation, we need a medication that is dissolved sublingually because dissolving and absorption to the bloodstream is fast. Am I making sense? Yes. Now, the same thing with hypoglycemia. With hypoglycemia, like the blood sugar is less than, let's say, uh, the normal is 60 to 100. So anything less than 60 is hypo, like you're gonna start, the heart is pumping, uh, pounding, uh, sweat, so the person blood sugar is low, they're gonna faint. So like, what do you do? All right, so you have to give glucose tablet, right? So glucose tablet, they're gonna suck on it. And then so glucose tablet is simple sugar. It doesn't need to be broken anymore. It's, the, the, it's ready to be absorbed in other words. So it's absorbed from the buccal mucosa. And then if somebody has a stroke, we put like a gel as if it's a toothpaste, but it's a gel. It's sugar under the tongue and it's absorbed and then brings the blood sugar up because directly went into the bloodstream. Does that make sense, guys? So otherwise, like, you know, you can drink orange juice, but by the time orange juice goes to the stomach, by the time it is like orange juice is disaccharide, it is gonna be broken one more time to become glucose, monosaccharide, then it's gonna absorb. Like who's gonna be faster? The one that is under the tongue. Does that make sense, guys? Yeah. So. And then, so a lot of time you're gonna be seeing people that, okay, I have a, oh, oh, I have a stomach uh, uh, ulcer, so like I cannot take aspirin. So like, no, you need to take the aspirin because like it's a treatment. So what do we give to those patients? Those patients, they get enteric coated aspirin. So what does that mean? The aspirin goes down to the stomach, passes from the stomach, goes into the intestine, in the small intestine it is broken. What happened? <laughs> Did I touch it? Yeah. So I, am I getting too excited? Huh? Oh, I'm. Oh, okay. So finished. The class is finished. <laughs> okay. Oh, okay. No, you know, you know, I'm not used to this, but like I'm doing my best. Uh, so, where were we? Ah, oh, here. Okay. So, have you heard about the enteric coated aspirin? I think it's time for you to go to break, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's nine o'clock. All right, 10 minutes. Okay, go.